Hello you fantastic people, welcome back to Borderlands 3 to my level 72 Flak Loadbot pet build. This thing is an absolute machine at every mobbing situation in the entire game. It can also take on a lot of bosses as well, it can go very well at some bosses, but it's definitely primarily a mobbing build. I'll start showing you guys some clips on screen so you guys can see it. Loadbot can take on both takedowns by himself with zero help from Flak. If you don't want to do anything, you can literally stand there like pretty much what I was doing the entire time, just watching Lodobot take on everything and have absolutely zero problem doing so, which is a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to mess around with. But of course, if you do get bored with that or you just want to make it even faster, if you do play as Flak and get a few kills, stack your kill skills, it'll go even faster than what you're seeing on screen because you're actually getting a ton of extra pet damage via your kill skills. So what you're seeing on screen isn't even the maximum damage pet can do. It's just kind of the best I could show you at the same time. Because it's kind of hard to get kills and look at Lodobot at the same time. But yeah, I thought I'd bring the build back. I made it for level 60, 65, and now 72 is easily the best version of this build so far. This extra 7 skill points go such a long way to buffing not only pet's damage, but also flak's damage as well. Originally, we just sacrificed everything from flak to just ant pet as much as possible. We still kind of do that to make sure his pet is as strong as possible, but along the way, you actually get so many skill points for Flak. Flak is also quite strong in this build as well, meaning you could make this a primary build if you wanted to, rather than just something I originally used as something just to mess around with for a bit, just to see what Lodobot did. But now it's strong enough to kind of be a main build if you wanted to. As per usual, I'll go over everything you guys need to know for this build, including, of course, the skill tree, as well as the weapons and anointments and which situations to use those in, and the gear like the shields, artifacts, class mods, and grenades. There is a base need for DLC 5, of course, because, you know, the skill tree literally has Lodobot in it. You can't build a Lodobot build without Purple Tree. But aside from that, you don't need any of the other DLCs. So if you have DLC 5, you are set. If you have any of the other DLCs, you'll just have more gear you could add to the build if you want to. But to be honest, other than having Lodobot, the build isn't very gear dependent. It just kind of adds on to it if you want to. For example, if you guys want to take this thing bossing, it's a different setup compared to whether you're in the melee one takedown, try and take on Wotan or the Valkyrie squad, compared to if you just jump into the Grave Wards arena and just expect Lodobot to just do it by himself kind of thing. Because in the melee one takedown, he's getting kill skills, he's getting stacked with all of his uh, damage and abilities, etc. Whereas Grave Ward doesn't have anyone in there with him for Pet to take out, to then buff his abilities, to then do a solid amount of damage to Grave Ward. So we have a different setup to essentially give him that damage. Starting with two Terra Annoyance, which is so nice we finally have those in the game permanently so we can chuck it in whatever build we want starting with the uh melee attacks applied terror to yourself chuck that in a face puncher which of course does melee damage for you that'll essentially apply terror to yourself on command whenever the heck you want then the second weapon can either be or can be any weapon you want but the best weapons to go for are a guardian shotgun which comes in dlc 6's vault card or a uh, Unforgiven Pistol is in base game, also a great option. Both essentially buff whatever form of damage you're currently doing like crazy if you're holding it. The Unforgiven Pistol has like 400% extra crit damage in its item card and the Guardian Shotgun, the further you are away from the enemy you're doing damage to, the more damage you do up to a crazy amount as well. So those are the best two options, or if you want, you can just chuck in whatever weapon or a shield if you want to. The Anointment is the Attack Command one for Pet. Essentially, if you have Terra on you at the time of issuing an Attack Command, it will consume all Terra and do up to 200% bonus fire damage. The Pet will do 200% bonus fire damage on his Attack Command, which is incredible. Essentially, allowing for crazy farms on any base game enemy, particularly ones that have flesh. For example, Grave Ward, you can literally do it in one Attack Command. It's a little weird. I'm not 100% sure what's happening, but I'll roll the clip if I haven't already. Essentially, you run in there, you um, apply terror to yourself, you throw down Gamma Burst, you switch to the weapon that has the anointment on there, and you issue the attack command, consuming all the terror, getting the bonus fire damage for his attack command. Lodobot sends the shots, doing a ton of damage, up to half to maybe two-thirds of Gravy's health, which is incredible, by the way. That guy's got a lot of health. Then, for some reason, the corrosive balls that roll down Gravy's platform at the very start of the fight, if they hit Lodobot... It does damage to Grave Ward in return. It's kind of like, I don't know, it procs the damage. I don't know what is happening. Please let me know if you guys understand. But it is a surefire way to making sure you literally one attack command kill Grave Ward. If he is standing in front of one of those uh, corrosive bowls, if Lodobot gets hit, takes out Grave Ward every single time. It's not because of a Nova Shield. I checked all of the skill abilities. It shouldn't be doing it. I don't know why it does it. But it literally leads to one attack command kills a Grave Ward. And I love it. It's awesome. 
Uh, so try it out yourselves if you guys would like. Let me know if you guys do know what is happening because I looked, I tried to find out, and I'm honestly lost. But that weird interaction doesn't happen in any other boss fight, so I'm just kind of confused to be honest. If you take it to Tyrene, it'll do it a very fast time as well. I haven't managed to stop Tyrene from flying away at all. She usually gets away once in the entire fight, which is still very, very good considering just Lodobot is doing the work. If you want to help, it'll definitely stop it from flying away. Uh, but that's pretty crazy because Tyrene is a very annoying boss to take out and stop her from flying away in her immunity stages. And Lodobot can almost do it, which is awesome. Now, as for mobbing situations, I actually didn't bother using the Terror Annoyance or holding a Guardian Shotgun or an Unforgiven Pistol. Because, to be honest, I didn't think Lodobot really needed it. I was just happily watching him do his thing and he definitely wasn't struggling. But if you guys want it to go even faster for Lodobot to be even stronger, if you hold either of those two guns or use the Terror Annoyance actively the whole time, you'll do a lot more damage if you guys want to. Um, as for the rest of the annoyments in mobbing situations, if you guys are going to shoot as well, rather than just staring at Lodobot like I was, you can use consecutive hits for weapons that would stack consecutive hits quickly. It does only stack to 100 now, but it is still quite a good annoyment. I chucked it on a Reflux, a Butcher, Light Shows, Monarchs. Uh, I also used the Gamma Burst annoyment. You can use that on any of them as well. The only problem with using Gamma Burst, as soon as Gamma Burst runs out, you're incredibly um, weaker, unfortunately, because the annoyment just runs out, and then it's a struggle to get Gamma Burst back quickly. So I left consecutive hits on most of them, to be honest, but you can rock whatever annoyment you guys would lack. Now, the rest of the gear is where it really buffs Lodobot's damage a ton, starting with shields. The Faulty Star is currently my favorite favorite shield for this build it's incredibly strong i'm pretty sure it's dlc 4 essentially whenever damage it can have a chance to proc a nova around the attacking enemy essentially if lodobot is getting shot or you as well is getting shot from 50 meters away it has a chance to proc a nova on that enemy killing the enemies around that enemy which is a very very strong ability and happens all the time but to be honest any Nova Shield is a fantastic choice. For example, the Snowshoe or the Frozen Heart. Snowshoe is from Melee 1 Takedown. Frozen Heart is from Aurelia. Both of those have Cryo Novas. You can also roll double Nova on most of these Nova Shields, which is incredibly, incredibly strong. I have a Snowshoe in here um, with the Action Skill Start Anoint. That will proc double Nova whenever you start Gamma Burst on you. It doesn't work, unfortunately, on Pet, that anointment, but it is worth still having just so that you are also doing that many extra Novas. You can also chuck on a red suit. It also comes with a Nova roll, which is really nice, but also it deals uh, 5,000 radiation damage per second to nearby enemies and grants uh, immunity to radiation damage. That's a nice one to mess around with. A Nova Burner Shield. Again, these Nova Shields are very uh, weak in capacity, but to be honest, you're not going to be struggling with survivability, and it's actually kind of a good thing if Lodobot's shield is breaking because you're proccing these Novas all the time. You can rock a double Nova Nova Burner Shield, which is incredible. 150k and then a 34k Nova whenever it breaks is very, very strong. It's very good for clearing any of the melee enemies that get up in Lodobot's face and it gets a little bit confused. That Nova clears them all out, which is awesome. You can also chuck on an Old God from DLC 2. A Fire one particularly is great because Lodobot, um, the one that we use, the War Loader, I believe it's called, uh, has a Fire Shotgun. So Fire Old Gods buff that even stronger. Or if you just want a ton of survivability, shock on a stopgap, um, particularly with extra capacity. If you can find it, you can get up to like 100k shield on a stopgap. Just essentially mean Lodobot will never go down, which is great. Now, as for class mods, there are actually a few options for this as well. For mobbing situations, I'm using Red Fang the entire way through. For skill points at the top, you want to try and get as many points into Verocity, Boss, Flax, Pets, Damage, which is really nice. Uh, as for passives, they don't actually matter. You can literally just look for one that has skill points if you're just going pet damage. If you want to uh, buff Flax damage, then you can go for passive rolls if you guys want. But for the pet side of things, nothing will help out pet when it comes to passives. Uh, I have a couple in here for that. As for bossing situations, I use a Deadeye because when enemies are above 30, uh, sorry, above 75% health, uh, Flak and their pet do an extra 35% damage, which really helps just dinking enemies, which is awesome. You can also use that in mobbing situations if you want, but um, Red Fang has that really nice ability in mobbing situations where Flak's pet taunts all enemies whenever Gamma Burst is open. So pretty much no one's shooting pet, uh, no one's shooting flak ever. They're all going for pet, and pet's killing all of them via Nova Shields, which is awesome. Uh, you can also, if you want, I don't use it, but friend bots do buff uh, flak's pet's damage. And if you're finding your pets going down a lot, I personally didn't have that experience, but if they are in your game, uh, whenever flak kills an enemy, you'll get them a second win back instantly if you want. Or if you start a gamma burst, you'll get them back. It's like a, a revive, essentially, when you teleport them. 
Uh, the other last option, uh, these two are kind of the I don't really use them, but if you want to kind of situation. The Stalker class mod is also quite nice because it does buff your hunt skill effects and duration, which is really nice for Flak's pet's damage as well as Flak himself. As for grenades, there's actually quite a few options. I don't have all the grenades currently, unfortunately. If I didn't include or mention any of the grenades that you guys like, let me know in the comment section down below. My personal favorites are Hunter Seekers. These things are incredible. If you guys didn't know, Loaderbot throws a copy of your grenade every once in a while, which gets not only grenade mayhem scaling, it also gets pet mayhem scaling. Combine that together, Hunter Seekers literally just obliterate everyone because they're hunter seeker grenades they're tracking grenades which will just shoot all the enemies one to two shot most things and then go and track another enemy and take them all out and go to another one and just keep going and keep going which is incredibly incredibly strong another option you can use is a fish slap because that melee damage and the uh guardian rank ability is incredibly strong as well it'll one dink anyone it hits the problem is it's not a tracker grenade so you know pet ai doesn't always work too well with them another option which i don't currently have is a vindicator gas coal i want to get one of those but i haven't been lucky enough to get one that's another fantastic option if you guys have one as for artifacts if i'm going to be honest that don't really matter i can't think of a good artifact that would really buff flax pet damage if you guys have a suggestion let me know i honestly just kept the ones that i usually have for flack himself for example the pearl of ineffable knowledge a snowdrift victory rush uh any company men that you guys have and i always just keep a cart personal launch pad on me for ammo literally choose whatever artifact you want i couldn't think of any that would go really well for pet as for mayhem modifiers if you guys are rocking mayhem 10 still the ones i would recommend for easy modifier would be a big kick energy or speed demon i don't think there's any that buff pet unfortunately the uh medium and the hard modifiers i'd recommend are uh, drone ranger and healy avenger they're pretty neutral not really going to get that much of a chance for enemies to heal back before pet takes them out or you take them out as a very hard modifier you probably have a little bit of a tough time but post-mortem or body system would be my recommendation problem with body system is you'd probably have to shoot the actual body system yourself because pet probably wouldn't be able to work out how to do that so if you can shoot them use body system if not post-mortem and finally into the level 72 skill tree starting with the purple tree we'll put five points in gotta go fast it just busts pet damage and movement speed both great things for the build i uh, put five points into success imminent essentially whenever flak or flax pet shields break or is filled they create a nova which is incredibly strong it says 13k there but it gets mayhem scaling i don't know what it works out to be but trust me it is strong and very very nice the only thing wrong with it is essentially whenever you spawn into the game you create create that nova which sometimes leads to downs which is kind of annoying in places like athenus you essentially create mayhem water which damages you via that nova so if you spawn into a place like i think athenus is one of the only places that it matters just jump away just don't stand too long because you you'll down yourself unfortunately um one point in combat veterinarian essentially uh it's life steal for pet whenever you're shooting an enemy you get a portion of that uh damage dealt into flax pet's health which is very nice Three points into Throat Ripper. It's essentially Mega Vor for Pet. He'll have a 15% chance to hit a critical hit whenever he's hitting anywhere in an enemy's body. One point in Take This. Essentially, Flax Pet will gain a copy of Flax Pet Shield, which is exactly how we're getting all of those beautiful Nova Shields into Flax Pet, doing a ton of damage via that. And then five points in Monkey Do. You actually get some damage for Flak in this ability as well, but we're primarily picking it up for the 70% extra uh, critical hit damage for Pet, which is hella nice. Then moving over to Blue Tree, we're of course using Gamma Burst. The Orgwins don't really matter out of the three, to be honest. The ones I use are Atomic Aroma, as well as Endurance, but you can use whichever ones you guys would like. As for skill points spent for Blue Tree, put five points into Veracity. You have an extra three from our uh, class mod, but you just essentially get a ton of pet damage out of this ability. So try and get as many points in there uh, as you can. Put one point in Heat Bites, and then pair that with five points in Frenzy. Essentially, whenever Flax pet deals damage, Flak and their pet uh, gain a stack of frenzy increasing their damage at max stacks 40 percent extra damage for both flak and flax pet which is hella nice three points in hive mind i'm pretty sure this got uh changed because originally it was just uh flak takes damage pet takes some of the damage for him instead but now actually you get um pet bonus damage by 22 and a half percent for 12 seconds whenever that happens which is quite nice and easy three points to pick up there and we kind of need to get a little bit lower in the tree to pick up endurance anyway so i chucked him there and then also one point in uh psycho head on a stick essentially it's a hunt skill as well whenever flat kills an enemy their pet gains increased movement speed and damage damage being 26 percent 
which is Hallet. Nice. Moving over to Red Tree. Now, we didn't even spec this last time in level 65 because we didn't have enough points to get far enough down the tree. But now we get a heap of damage for Pet as well as Flak in this, in this tree. Five points in Interplanetary Stalker, Kill Skill, Bust Damage as well as Pet Damage. Uh, I put two points and leave no trace. I was honestly just to get down the tree later on, but you do get some bullets back in the mag if you are using flak. Uh, five points in Hunter's Eye. You get crit damage, armor damage, and damage reduction against those particular enemies because we are not using a bounty hunter for this build, unfortunately. But again, this is kind of just to get down the tree as well. Three points in head count. Now, this one we are using uh, quite a lot because if you didn't notice, we are not using Persistent Hunter for the gun damage or action skill duration because we actually want to refresh Gamma Burst often. You can, if you want, spec Persistent Hunter. You can easily take the three points out of uh, Hive Mind if you would like. But I put the three points um, in Hive Mind instead because I want to refresh Gamma Burst regularly. Pets AI, it's a little derpy sometimes, and also even when it's actually being good, you want to be able to position pet whenever or wherever you want. In certain boss fights, you want to dump it at Wotan's feet to get that Nova damage going. You want to move it up in the melee one takedown bridge. Sometimes it lags behind, you can bring it forward. If it sometimes goes down, um, you can use Gamma Burst to get them back up as a easy revive. Just having that on loop a little bit faster is very nice. Keeping Gamma Burst open all the time doesn't work out very well. You're not getting action skill elementals pretty much ever. It's pretty much just a nice way to move the build and pet through the melee one takedown quickly. So that's why we have three points in head count just to get the action skill cooldown back as quick as possible uh three points in most dangerous game great kill skill for gun damage crit damage as well as pet damage for a very long time pretty easy to get as well uh three points in a big game is a, a hunt skill boost for duration and effects which is really nice because hunt skills include most dangerous game interplanetary stalker previous attack which you pick up later as well as frenzy and Psycho Head and the Stick. All of those get buffed just from big game, which is very, very nice. Uh, five points in Grim Harvest. Boss gun damage by 15%, but pet damage by 35%, which is really, really nice. It also has action skill damage increased by 50. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know if you guys do know if it buffs Atomic Aroma. If it does, lit. If it doesn't, well, I mean, I'd still pick up the ability anyway for the damage. And moving down to the only... Um, capstone that we pick up is megavore 20% chance to hit a critical hit anywhere on the body this is just for flak pets not going to get any bonus out of this but getting your action skill cooldown uh back as quickly as possible is nice and it just buffs your damage as well if you want to be using flak and then green tree the last few points we have three points in sikkim the only time i pick up this ability because the only time i use attack commands is in a pet uh specific build it's very nice increased damage by 30 percent and cooldown by 30 percent as well Four points in Furious Attack. I honestly took the one extra point out of here to put Megavore. So if you don't want Megavore, if you don't want to use it with Flak, you can put the extra point in here if you want. Furious Attack, shooting things, gets you uh, extra gun damage as well as pet damage. That stacks up very easily as well. We also have one point in Eager to Impress. You only need one. You can put more if you want to, but it is a kill skill. Whenever you kill an enemy, you get action skill cooldown. Um, as well as if pet kills somebody, you get action skill cooldown rate. But the main thing, and the only reason I bother putting one point in there, if this wasn't a thing, I probably wouldn't have spent the point, you actually get your attack command cooldown refreshed completely. So if pet kills somebody with their attack command, you instantly have attack command again, so you can just constantly do it on a loop, and it's really, really good. You only need one point in there to get that ability. I have an extra two from my um, class one at the moment, but you don't need that. And the action skill cooldown rate um, for the regular action skill, you're getting from head count. So that's literally just for the attack command to be back instantly. Now, as for pet, the only choice, you can use other pets if you want to, but the best choice easily is the war loader. I think I said the wrong one earlier, but it's the wall loader. Essentially uh, upgrades to a fire shotgun and your grenades, like I said. Also boss flux fire rate by a whole 12%. Woo. And then when uh, Flak issues attack command, the Warloader uh, unleashes a barrage of missiles at the target, which absolutely destroys all the things. And that is my level 72 Flak Loaderbot pet build. I hope you guys found this video helpful or enjoyable. If you did, don't forget to smash subscribe. Click that like button down below. Both are free. Help me out a bunch, and I very much do appreciate it. Other than that, we have a Twitch we stream to every night, and we have a Discord with awesome people. Both linked down below in the description if you want to check them out. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you guys next video and a live stream. Till then, adios.